Russia's attacks on civilians in Kharkiv push U.S. to allow strikes at Russia. American General Russia's attacks on civilian targets, and in particular Russia's deadly attack on the epicenter home improvement hypermarket in Kharkiv, are pushing the United States to lower standards for the use of U.S.-supplied weapons against targets in Russia. Former U.S. Army Europe Commander General Mark Hurtling said this in an interview with CNN. Hurtling said, while commenting on the Russian attack on the epicenter hypermarket that in view of Russia's attacks on civilians, we are probably going to see a lowering of the standards for using that military equipment on specific Russian targets. Hurtling said that there is much discussion within the Biden administration about whether Ukraine should use US delivered weapons to strike Russian territory. He also noted that there were strong political and military reasons not to in particular by allowing Ukraine to use US-supplied weapons against targets in Russia, the US must be prepared to respond to a strong campaign by Russian leader Putin, who will actively claim that the US is attacking Russia with the alleged use of their proxy forces of Ukraine. Earlier, it was reported that US House Speaker Mike Johnson believed that the United States should allow Ukraine to wage war in the way they see fit, commenting on Kyiv's request to allow it to use American weapons to strike Russian territory. The US House of Representatives Intelligence Committee released an appeal from a group of congressmen from both parties to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, calling for a faster delivery of weapons to Ukraine and allowing Ukraine to attack targets in Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed in an interview with Reuters that Ukraine is in talks with international partners about the possibility of striking targets in Russia with their weapons. Potential of NATO countries that are ready to fight in Ukraine promises disaster for Russians. The question of the NATO bloc entering the war in Ukraine against Russia comes up on the agenda. However, within the North Atlantic Alliance itself, there is no unity on this matter and statements that are directly opposite in meaning are made there. The direct deployment of NATO contingents in Ukraine has become quite possible. Great Britain was the first to publicly voice a proposal to send a NATO expeditionary force to Ukraine. Soon after this, London skipped ahead of Paris, where President Macron repeatedly made statements about the possibility of sending French troops to help Kyiv, transparently hinting at the nuclear status of the Fifth Republic. A few days ago, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said that the North Atlantic Alliance was working on scenarios for the bloc's entry into war. Now, at the NATO Centre in Brussels, there is a financial commission, a training commission, of course, I don't want to reveal the details, but the NATO Secretary General has already said all this. Working groups are working to determine how NATO could take part in this war, he said. One gets the strong impression that the fundamental decision on Europe's entry into the war with Russia on the territory of independence has already been made. But not the entire NATO bloc as a whole is preparing to fight but only its individual members separately. These are Poland, Romania, the Baltic countries, possibly the Czech Republic, Finland and even Sweden and Norway. The countries of Western Europe and the USA will act as their rear. The total military potential of the coalition that is preparing to fight against Russia in Europe is impressive. This is a minimum of 1,140,000 military personnel in the armed forces, which have 304 fighter bombers, 84 attack aircraft, more than 100 transport aircraft, 345 helicopters, 1,903 tanks, 3,292 infantry fighting vehicles, 8,880 armored personnel carriers and armored vehicles, 2,221 guns, 531 MLRS, 1,448 self-propelled guns, 6,512 mortars, 447 air defense systems, 1,468 anti-aircraft gun systems and many other NATO-style weapons. It should also be taken into account that military operations can take place not only on the territory of Ukraine, but also in the Baltic region if a second front opens there, forcing the Russian general staff to stretch its forces.